Hi. I got an email recently from one of you viewers out there showing me a link to a YouTube video which showed how to do a tape stop effect using Ableton Live. And in the email, the user asked me if there was a way to do this in Reason or Record. Well, I thought about it and tinkered around for a bit, and I came up with a way that you can do it in both applications. So I'm going to show you that this week, and let's get right into it. All right, I'm going to start with Reason first. And for anyone who doesn't know what a tape stop effect sounds like or what it is, it's a simulation of what it would sound like if your music was playing back on an old reel-to-reel -reel tape machine and you press stop on the transport. It's a very short pitch change to silence, kind of like this. To achieve this, we start with a section of our music track where we would like to hear the effect. So in this example here, I'm going to hear the effect on the last beat of the fourth bar. Set your left and right markers, the L and R at the top timeline, to the section that you want to change. And you can use the Alt or Option key for the left and the Command or Apple key for the right while you're clicking in the timeline, as you can see here. And as you can see right now, I'm going to be taking the entire last four bar and looping or setting that section. Now select Export Loop as Audio File in the File menu and save it somewhere you can find it easily, like your desktop. Next, create an NNXT sampler and make sure it's initialized so that there are no preset sounds loaded in, like this. Unfold the NNXT editor section like this and click on the load sample folder here. Select the loop you just exported and it will be loaded in and have a root note or original pitch of C3 on the MIDI keyboard. Make sure the sample is selected or highlighted in the NNXT editor and change the pitch bend range to 24. Now let's create an empty clip in the NNXT track in between the L and the R locators and double click it so we can draw in the note trigger. Draw in a note on C1 for the entire length of the clip. I'll explain why I use C1 and not C3 in a second. Exit the edit mode and go to the automation pull down menu and select more parameters. Click on the pitch bend parameter tick box and then press OK. To make sure that the volume levels are the same, you should probably alternate between soloing the imported loop and the original track and adjust the levels accordingly on the NNXT to get it as close as possible, kind of like this. Next, create an empty clip on the pitch bend automation lane like this. Double click on the clip so we can draw in some vector automation points. The first point will be at the beginning of the clip with a value of 8,191, which is also the pitch wheel all the way up. And the second will be at the end of the clip with a value of negative 8,191, which is also the same as the pitch wheel all the way down. The reason I drew in a note on C1 instead of C3 is because we are going to take this sample down in pitch four octaves so we can really get an extreme pitch down change. And the pitch bend range is set to 24. The clip has a start point with the wheel all the way up, so it's going to start playing back the loop at the correct pitch and tempo, which is C3. Now the last thing I do is mute or delete the other clips that are playing for that bar so we only hear the tape stop sample being played like this. Depending on your song, this might be a little tricky, especially if you're cutting off a legato MIDI note that continues past the tape stop loop effect section. In that case, you may need to edit and re-trigger that note just after the tape stop effect section. If you want a faster tape stop, just scale tempo on the pitch bend automation clip we created using the scale tempo function in the tools menu. As you can see here, when you click on double, it means a faster tempo and half means slower. Basically, it either divides the clip that's selected in half or multiples of two 
This is also a cool way to do half-time, double-time style effects on your MIDI performances as well. In Record, the process is the same, except that it's much easier to isolate the tape stop effect, since I usually render the MIDI tracks I've created down to audio, and then cut and mute the clips for the other tracks in the section that I want that tape stop effect. If you're not familiar with how to render those tracks as audio quickly, just use the Bounce Mixer Channels function in the file menu. Select the individual tracks here, and then select Bounce to New Tracks in Song and Mute Original Channels. Then what you're going to have is both the audio rendered version of those tracks and also the MIDI tracks to go back to if you need to edit anything later. Well, this week's episode was pretty fun for me, and I hope it was for you too. So I'll see you all in a week, and keep sending those emails in. Bye.